Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. It is a beautiful day today after quite a few storms have come through. So it's a beautiful day to go out in the garden. And today we're going to go out and talk about beans right here on Garden Jen's Journey. Okay, so if you've been watching my channel at all, especially this year, you know in my garden I have a lot of different beans that I am growing. We're vegetarians, so beans are a big part of our diet. So we grow lots of beans, lots of dried beans that we can use to make soups and spreads and all sorts of wonderful things. And so I figured today I would take you out and just kind of focus on some of those beans that I'm growing, what they're used for, and we're actually going to harvest some beans. So let's head on out to the garden and get talking about beans and hopefully the sun won't be too bright today. So these uh, ugly looking things are actually just the first fruits of some of those beans that we're going to harvest today. So as we go out to the garden, I'm going to show you the plants that these came off of and get the rest of those beans off of that plant as well. So in my container bed here, we have the Calypso bean, which I will be harvesting in a future video. Probably the video right after this one because you can see these guys are pretty much dead but they're still green these pods are still green here and so we want them to be yellow and dried out these ones are almost there but they're still kind of kind of moist so these aren't quite ready yet but they're getting there so I'll show you what uh, these beans look like in a future video but these are a dried bean they're excellent for soups and so uh, I started growing a few of these this year just to see how they grow so when I grow them next year I know how to take care of them better my ducks are in here in my container bed just enjoying some shade at the moment there's lots of mint and things and bugs in the mint that they can enjoy and also they um, hide underneath these containers just to get some shade and get some rest um, these guys are an excellent addition to my garden I've talked about them before these are khaki campbell ducks and khaki campbells and Indian runners uh, which they are a related breed uh, the khaki campbells come from uh, a cross between Indian runners and uh, I believe the Cayuga duck um, I could be wrong but anyways those two specific breeds are meant for gardening because they eat all the bugs in your garden but not necessarily your garden they don't eat a lot of the produce in there so they're excellent for organic pest control now let's head on out to the rest of the garden and just see the other beans that are out there. Alright, so this is my lima bean patch that I grow on my trellis. Lima beans are a vine bean and they grow very, very, very long um, vines. Um, a couple years ago when I grew them over on the dog run area over there, uh, they were probably 18 to 20 feet tall so um, yeah and so they grow grow very very huge and these are giant lima beans that's their specific type and so I'll show you some of these pods here so you see this pod compare it with the size of my hand and it's not done growing yet so these are very very large lima beans some of the ones that come from Greece uh, the beans themselves you can see this bean right there about the size of my first part of my thumb these guys are about the size of a half dollar if you get the ones that are from Greece 
Um, they're grease giant lima beans and they're specific that, to that region and they are huge. <laughs> so anyways, these are lima beans. My husband really loves lima beans. So um, I made sure to plant plenty of them. So he has quite a few of them for over the winter. This trellis here, it's a beautiful living arbor full of beans. This is the Old Mother Stellard variety. It's a beautiful bean. And I will try to post pictures of what the dried beans look like um, at the end of the video. Um, the ones that I've grown before, I'll try to post pictures of them. This one is a very, very beautiful bean. It's like a purple mottled bean. And it's a wonderful, smooth, creamy bean. You can use it for soups. You can use it for spreads. Um, anywhere that you would use uh, a dried bean, this is an excellent bean. And it's very prolific. I mean, you can probably see all the bean pods on this thing here. Lots of bean pods here. Lots of bean pods. And uh, so we'll see how they do. Um, it's the end of Sep or it's the middle part of September, just starting. And now the beans are just starting to turn. You can see that we're getting some yellow in here, which is very important. Um, the frost is only three to four weeks away. And so these beans need to finish turning their yellow color and drying out. Because we try to dry the beans on the vine. Um, that way they mature naturally. If you harvest them too soon, then the beans aren't quite mature and you have a higher chance of them rotting instead of actually drying out and being a dry bean. So we got some that are turning. But yeah, this is a wonderful, wonderful dry bean. This is the second year I've grown it. And I'm just amazed at how much this plant produces. Um, when you think about dried beans, it takes a lot of dry beans to feed a family. Um, so uh, to some people, growing a small garden like this, you wouldn't be able to grow enough dried beans on your own to feed your family. You would have to go to the store to supplement, you know, buy beans from the store and yada, yada, yada. But I think with this particular variety here, I've been so blessed by how many beans I can get off it. And this is a, let's see, two, this is a three panel trellis. Um, it grows quite a few beans. So I don't think that we're going to be uh, too shy of how many beans that I can produce here on my small garden uh, to feed the family. Okay, so this is the Hadatsa shield bean. And this bean really struggled this year because of the frost and pests and competition. And so it really, really struggled. But this is another dry bean. I actually got quite a few of these seeds from a seed swap. So I grow a lot of my beans for the first time from a seed swap to have enough seeds to plant again the following year. But there's a lot of bean pods on here, so I think we'll be able to have a soup or two um, because there are quite a few pods. And they're a nice size bean. Um, they're a beautiful, beautiful bean. And again, I will show pictures of them at the end of the video if I can find some. I didn't grow this one uh, before to have a picture of what they look like after harvest, but I'm sure I can find some. They are really, really pretty. This is one of three trellises I have growing of the snap variety uh, beans. This is the Blue Lake Pole bean. Blue Lakes are generally known to be bush beans, but this is the pole bean variety. And um, I'm not too impressed with it just because when I uh, started growing them, when I first got the package and they're supposed to be all pole beans, half of the ones that I planted were bush beans. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's true of all the Blue Lake 
beans that you get if you're not going to get a true pole bean when you buy pole beans or not. Um, but other than that, they, they produce pretty good. I mean, look at the size of this. It's like the regular bush beans. Beautiful, beautiful size. Um, but I think I'm going to stick with my Kentucky Wonders. Um, I've been growing Kentucky Wonder pole beans for five years. And I know that they're a pole bean and they produce very well. And so that's probably when I'm going to grow um, from henceforth is stick with my Kentucky Wonders. Um, sometimes when you find a bean that you really, really like and then you try something new uh, because somebody suggests it, you end up going back to your uh, the other uh, variety because you, it works out better. But sometimes the new varieties actually do work pretty well. And I'll show you an example of that um, as we continue on. This is my second trellis of snap variety beans. This is a favorite of mine. This is the Trifonal Violetto pole bean. And it is a purple pole bean. And purple uh, vegetables are very good. They have a uh, unique nutrient in them and I can never pronounce them. Uh, it starts with an A, um, but it's uh, things that you only find in purple plants. So I try to make sure that I grow purple beans because I don't eat a lot of other purple things. But uh, it's a very prolific plant. You can see all the beans on here. And we've actually had almost too many to harvest and they grow so fast. Um, you can see a lot of these beans are huge and they're bumpy. And it's because we're letting them go to seed so I can save uh, seed for the following years. But also, um, they grow so fast that if you don't pick them within a couple days, they, they do start getting where they're now seed kind. So what I don't use for seed, um, I'll give to my chickens because they love them at this stage as well. So again, this is the purple trifano violetto pole bean, and it's one of my favorites. And usually this would fill the trellis just like my old mother Stallard. But with the frost and things, um, it's only got half a trellis full. But still, um, we've gotten quite a bit of beans out of this, even with all the problems we've had. Okay, so this is one of my new favorites. This is another purple pole bean. And I got these beans in a seed swap. And I only got a few beans. And uh, so I grew them mainly to again be able to save seeds so I had them for the future uh, but this is a very very prolific plant so there was no problem in getting enough beans to save seeds for uh, next time but also to have quite a few beans uh, to eat as well this one is the purple potted pole bean that's what this one's called uh, the Trifano Violetto is a cylindrical bean, where this one is more of a, like a broad bean, a flat bean. I'll show you here. It's quite flat in comparison, um, where the other one's more cylindrical. And so it's a very different kind of bean to eat, um, very different texture. You can see how flat this is compared to the cylindrical shape of a different kind of bean and so this is kind of one of my favorites um, just because it's very prolific uh, again you can see the amount of beans on this thing I have tons of them um, so um, I might grow this one instead of the Trifano next year just uh, to give the Trifano a break but also um, just to add something different because when you have a cylindrical bean and then you mix a, a flat broad bean in with that with your canning you get kind of two different textures um, if you put them in salad again you get two different textures um, and there's a lot of bean on here you can see how long these guys get they're huge and so there's a lot of bean in this um, which is very exciting so this is one of my favorites now. I never would have um, tried it before, but um, you know, sometimes seeing is believing, just like I said earlier. Sometimes you get a, 
somebody gives you a seed to try and it's a complete flop and then somebody gives you a seed to try and you're just uh, completely blown away by how good the crop works in your area okay last but certainly not least is this sad looking patch of beans here what's left of them and uh, this is actually perfect time for these guys they have uh, finished drying mostly and are ready to harvest today so that's what we're going to do um, these are the tiger eye pinto bean or eye of the tiger pinto bean um, depends on how some people list them and they're a very gorgeous pinch pinto bean uh, they originate from either Chile or Argentina, from that area. Um, Baker Creek had carried these for one year, and uh, Living Traditions Homestead had uh, done a video on them. And for the life of me, I cannot find that video anymore, so um, <laughs> I can't link it to you. But um, anyways, I wanted to try it. So the next year I went to order them and Baker Creek no longer carries these. And I was all like, oh my, and I didn't know where else to find them because I usually only um, order from Baker Creek and my gardener. Um, but somebody that I knew in my gardening group actually had saved some seeds from when they grew the tiger eye pinto bean. And so they shared it with me. And this patch is a story of just survival through the ridiculous kind of weather we've had this year. I had originally planted 12 plants here. I only had like 15 beans that I got. Um, so I was very careful to make sure that I grew them um, in my winter sowing containers and that I watched them and they got big enough where um, if I had slugs or something, I wouldn't have issues with slugs. But anyways, um, I planted uh, 12 plants, and out of that 12 plants, 8 really started growing and doing good. And then with all the wind, uh, the weather, I think I have 5 plants that actually made it to where they grew tall enough and started producing. And so um, this is what I have left out of the 12 plants this year. And it doesn't look like much. But I tell you what, these guys are a winner in my book. The seed pods, they have between four and five uh, beans a piece in them. And I already have a bucket full and I showed you that uh, earlier. And I'll show you again here. So this is a bucket that I have already harvested yesterday as I was pulling some of the um, smaller plants out. So you can see I definitely got uh, my investment of seeds back and I have more to get. So I will go ahead and I will get these harvested today. And I'm gonna have to do this one-handed because my tripod is MIA. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to um, hold on to this camera and harvest these bean pods and then show you what the beans inside look like. So again, these pods look really bad. I mean, they look moldy and stuff like that, but this is actually perfect. This lets you know that these beans have fully dried out. They should kind of rattle. If not, it means that the pods are still a little moist, but um, they're not as bad as the Calypso beans. They are quite dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these off because if I don't get these off soon, I'm actually going to lose them to uh, my ducks because these are low enough that the ducks can actually reach up here and eat them and ducks love beans too so let's go ahead and get these off here so i'm just going to pull these off and i'm not really worried about damaging the vine because i'm pulling this vine out of here anyway so we're just going to pull them off And you'll hear my chickens are going crazy. 
They like to fight over the nesting boxes in my coop. I have plenty of nesting boxes, but they have favorite nesting boxes and some are very anal about it. If they don't have the nesting box they want, they're gonna sit there and scream about it. Even if there's four other nesting boxes open. Gotta love chickens. So I'm gonna have to harvest some of these from the other side, but that's okay. I gotta try not to get my hands caught up in the raspberries here either. I just planted my raspberries here in the summer. And uh, again, the raspberries are a testament to survival. Um, I planted these back in June uh, when they were given to me from somebody whose property was getting all torn up to put in a new house. And half of these transplants died. <laughs> You know, which is to be expected. Here in Michigan, you don't plant things um, in months that don't have R's when it comes to transplanting like your berry bushes, trees, and things like that. Because the months that don't have R's are quite hot. If you think about it, if you, you go through your months, you know, you have um, January, February, March, April. Those are all cooler months. And then you get into May, June, July, and August. Those are your really hot months. And so you don't transplant things in those hot months. It's too much of a shock to your plants. So anyways, I planted these um, in June and watered them and tried to take care of them. And only, I think, three out of the five, six transplants that I did made it. But you can see that they're doing really, really good. They've got brand new shoots that I have had to tie up here. And so I'm excited. So I've got to work around these to try to get my tiger eye bush beans out of here. Or pinto beans. Oh, that's not quite dry yet. This is too moist. If I harvest this now, these will mold. So yep, these I have to leave here and hope the ducks don't eat them. That one down here is dry though. And then over here, these ones look very pitiful. I had broke the plant yesterday and then just hung these up to dry. I'm actually just going to set this whole thing in my bucket over here. Look at that beautiful plantain. <laughs> Some people would call that a weed. I call that food and medicine right there. Alright, we got some more we're going to harvest here. And then, I will take you inside and show you what these guys look like, because they're really, really cool. Look at this bucket. It is overflowing with beans from that pitiful patch of beans from five measly plants and I want to read uh, a verse a couple of verses to you that really uh, for me just really this bucket just really goes hand in hand with proving um, and these verses kind of talk about paying your tithes and offerings if you belong to uh, a church making sure that you you pay your tithes and offerings so the church can t continue to work. But it's also another application about trusting uh, God to provide. So I'm going to read these verses real quick to you. It's found in Malachi chapter 3 verses 10 through 11. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And here's the, the trust issue. Prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be not room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not 
destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Again, that's just a Bible promise showing what God can do when you trust him. Um, and it's just amazing. Out of those five measly plants that were really tormented by the weather, by snails, by grasshoppers, that we've got all these bean pods. And now I'm going to open some of these up so you can see the beauty that is within these things. Alright, so this thing looks old and moldy, but let's see what it looks like inside. Let's see if I can grab these. See those beautiful beans. Aren't these beautiful? A little bit lighter. There's more. You see the eye here? It's kind of how it gets its name. It looks like a tiger eye. And let's see how many we've got here. There's four there. There's four there. There's four there. And there's four there. So already I have more seeds here than what I planted in the ground. So you can see how many seeds I'm going to have. Just amazing. If you want these seeds, I will be doing uh, an Etsy shop just for um, the gardening stuff that I, I do and the herbal things that I make from my garden. So I have an Etsy shop already for my soaps and my tie-dye t-shirts. But I'm going to be doing one uh, that's specifically going to have seeds and going to have herbal stuff that I make from the things right here on the homestead and a couple of all natural soaps that I make from things right here on the homestead. So if you want some of these tiger eye beans, let me know and I'll make sure I put them in my Etsy shop.
So thank you so much for spending this day with me going through a walk in the garden and just looking at all the different bean plants that I grow. And again, I will be putting seeds of those different varieties of bean plants and some other seeds from my garden in the Etsy shop as soon as I get it up and running. And I will post a comment below the video. I will pin a comment to that particular Etsy shop. I thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends who might want to know more about the different bean varieties they can grow in their garden. I thank you for being on this journey with me in its ups and downs. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you can become a part of the journey. I'd love to have you along. And until next time, everybody, I hope that wherever you are, that you're wonderfully blessed. Bye-bye.